Hey, Brian. Yeah? Want to do some quadcopter stuff? Yeah, I want to learn how to program an at Mel. Hey, Alex, could you do me a favor and uh, hit the magic button? To upgrade the firmware in a KK flight controller, you're going to need a few bits and pieces in addition to a Windows XP or better computer. Buy yourself an AVR USB programmer, like this hobby power unit that I purchased from Amazon. Now you need to download three things from the internet. The first is the driver package for the USB programmer. The second is the AVR update software. And the third is your choice of firmware. I'm using custom firmware from RC911 because I like the self-leveling mix mode that's included in the package. We've also included links for all these bits in our show notes in case you don't want to go searching around the net to find them. These instructions will work for anyone using a KK 2.0 or mini KK flight controller or better. Unzip all the files into a folder containing your software, then cut the empty sockets from the AVR programmer connector. You may not need to cut down your block if it's properly sized, or if you're running a mini KK flight controller, but most of the AVR programmers include a few too many sockets. You'll need to remove them if you want to fit it on your full-size KK board. Connect the AVR programmer to the six programming pins on the KK. On the full-size model, the pins are at the bottom of the board to the left of the buttons. On the mini KK, the pins are above the board to the left. Plug in your programmer with a yellow or orange cable towards the center of the board. If your AVR programmer doesn't have a yellow or orange cable, then plug it in with the cut side of the connector towards the center of the board. Plug the AVR programmer into a Windows computer and the screen on the KK should light up. Run a self-test, then display the startup message. Your Windows computer won't find the right drivers for the AVR programmer, so we'll have to install it manually. Get into the device manager and search through the devices until you see the entry for USB ASP under other devices. Double click that device and click update driver, then click browse my computer for device software. A navigation window will pop up. Select the folder with the unzipped driver package that you downloaded. You'll probably get a Windows security pop up warning you that you're about to install an unverified driver. Live a little bit dangerously and click install this driver software anyway. With the driver running, you'll need to install the AVR update software, then run it. You'll see a small program window. That's your update interface. In the AVR drop-down menu, choose the right Atmel chipset, which for all KK 2.0 and better boards is the Atmega 644P. Now click the first icon from the left, which is load flash hex to buffer, and you'll be given a navigation menu. Navigate to the folder with the .hex file containing the firmware that you downloaded, then click auto program. You may get two error dialog boxes. Click OK to clear them both. You should see a progress meter at the bottom of the program window. When you see the next pop-up, you're done. The AVR software has successfully written your firmware to your KK flight controller. Uh, I know there's going to be some people who are asking why why upgrade, why update. Isn't the firmware pretty solid? Yeah, yeah, yeah the it firmware is. actually is pretty solid. It, it'll work. Right. But you can get more stable firmware that flies a little bit better. And my personal favorite, the RC911. So this... That's the firmware that I have loaded up on, on one of these class of, of, uh, of quads. I have just this kind of frame that's currently using a KK board. Right. And it does this thing called horizon mode, which the flip, the flip is also famous for. That's what it does, which allows me to fly it just like I would normally. It does mm -hmm. all the self-leveling. But as soon as I get to the end, to the edge of the gimbal, it'll actually allow me to flip it without me having to go full auto, which I want to do. Oh. You just have to make sure not to hit the thrust while you're upside down, right? Yes, because then you will go straight into the ground, which <laughs> I have done, which is why I have yeah. like three of these rather than six of them. <laughs> well, you probably had six of them to start with, I right? I did. They're yeah. gone now. They're, they're, they've, they've gone to a better place. No, that's pretty cool. And the process for updating, I mean, that kind of carries over to other things. Like it's very yes. similar to when I was updating Arduinos and yes, stuff like that. Yes, this actually, so this programmer, this is not a flight controller programmer. This is not a KK board programmer. This is a USB to us. It's a standard that we use uh, that you'll find on pretty much every DIY microprocessor board. It's essentially just a serial connector. Mm -hmm. uh, so the nice thing about this, this process is this will let you update non-KK boards. It will let you update non-flight controllers. This is really just a skill that you have to have if you're dealing with electronics and, and microprocessors at all. Yeah, no, I find it interesting. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So uh, also we have to 
replace or upgrade yours, correct? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, Actually, I think I, uh, I hit the ground hard enough that I broke one of the buttons off of my, my KK. So I don't know if there's a firmware <laughs> update that'll fix that. <laughs> Uh, oh, the RC911 Plus, that actually regrows the plastic. Oh, that, sweet. That's See, that's another reason why you should do your firmware <laughs> upgrades. <laughs>